Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over what we think you should take with you when you go out and bash with your buddies. Now, more often than not, somebody in the group forgets to bring their tools with them or any spare parts they have and it can just kill their afternoon. And the weird thing is, half the time, and we've done this, half the time you can come right back in and get into your toolbox and fix it in less than five minutes. Then you have to go all the way back out to the track and play with your friends. That's a real deal breaker. In this video, we're gonna go over what we think you need to have with you, some of the optional components and so forth. And hopefully this video will help you prevent this problem. Check this out. So hey guys, this video is not going to be very long. There's not a whole lot involved in it, but hopefully what we show you here will help in the future. So let's get down on the bench and check it out. So first off, we're going to go over what we consider to be must haves for your kit. And these are really important because most of these cars use a lot of the same tools to work on them. And the majority of them are metric. Some of the older ones have like Phillips screwdrivers, but most of the modern cars use nut drivers and hex drivers. So in this kit, at the bare minimum, you need to have an Allen set. Now this is metric and it covers all the way from 1.5 up. So this will fit most of the Allen heads in the car, but these can be cumbersome and awkward. But when you need to break something loose, a good set of these comes in handy. However, these are what we recommend and these are hex drivers and it's not this particular one anything that's a handled unit that has a well machined head on it will do the job and generally if you're running 10th and 8th scale cars you need from 1.5 you need 2.0 2.5 and in some cases 3.0 in the millimeter category for these and these are really nice they get into tight areas and they're handy so these need to go in there but if you can't afford one of those this little kit's kind of neat and what it is is just a little handle but when you open it up it's got all of the drivers that you need right there there is a downside to this particular kit though and get a good look at it here let's show you what it is get a good look at that because it's a nice kit you can find these for about seven dollars on ebay and that should tell you something when you're looking at the cost on these things but these work overall pretty well but here's the problem when you take a look at this, and I don't know if you can see that, but right here, this is one type of metal and that's another. So they're two separate properties in there. And when you really torque on these, you break that loose and then you, can, you don't have any power on them. These are good for removing stuff that's already been loosened up or isn't super torqued down. But I would not recommend untorquing something with this one because you'll just break the tool. That's where this kit comes in handy. Crack it loose with this, spin it out with this. In the field, that's a good compromise and it does work well. Alongside of that, also you're going to need some sort of nut driver system. Now this is just a regular metric socket set and of course a ratchet to go with it and this will help when you're trying to remove things that have a nut involved. This is mandatory but if you don't have one of those, a small crescent wrench will still do the job and in a pinch these things work really well. Alongside of that you need a couple different types of pliers. Now these work really good especially this type for installing zip ties. When you really have to get them tight these do a great job but in tight areas this set here which is a needle nose set with an angle to it these get into tight areas and work really well. On the optional category for that these are hemostats and they are nice little pliers but they lock and they'll hold things for you and you can get down in really tight areas with them and pull things through when you're trying to fish for that piece of velcro to get that battery down these get right in there and pull them out really nice so these should be in the kit 
But alongside that, you also have a couple of other items that are kind of necessary, and you never know when you're gonna need a set, but here's some wire strippers. Those are really good to have along, and they have a nice cutter on there for, re for removing the excess on a zip tie if you have to have it. And you have, should have something to pry with, and that's where a standard screwdriver, and this is a compound screwdriver. On one side, it's got Phillips. On one side, it's got a regular bit and the two different sizes. So these come in handy in a variety of ways, although they're not really necessary. I would definitely want one of these in my kit. And the problem is when you impact a car, and what I mean by that is if you hit the ground hard enough a few times, it'll impact dirt into those Allen heads, and you can't get the wrench in there, and you wind up stripping them out trying to do it. That's where a little pick like this comes in handy. Now this pick is to a point here, so you can get in there and dig all the dirt out so your tools fit properly. Definitely a must have. Add to that, there's a couple more things that you really should have with you. One is a nice industrial type set of scissors. And these things are really good. You can snip out your body with them. You can, anything that you need to snip off, these industrial types are really good for that. Alongside of that, every now and then, you need a side cutter and these are just snippers but they run off the side here so you can get in tight and snip off what gets in the way if you have some things that are interfering with other things these are great for fixing that especially if you're in a pinch but alongside that every now and then your receiver can come loose in the car and if you have a gyro in there that's detrimental to the car a little two-sided tape that is even a small roll like this can get you up and running in the short term till you can get it back to the to the studio and fix it. Also, regular, this is just electrician's tape, but it's the thin stuff here so that it'll fit in tight spaces. So this stuff is also a must. And anyone that's been out there with anything with power realizes that you have to bring super glue because when your tires come detached from the wheels, a little dab of super glue, 10 minutes of wait time, and you're up and running just like that. And that leaves us with only two more items that we feel that you must have in your bag. One is take some sturdy zip ties. These things will solve a problem more often than not, at least for the short term. I wouldn't leave these in the car. Once you're back to your workbench, swap them out, put the right part in there. But in the short term, these things have a lot of uses and they are really helpful. But that's not all. Here's one thing that most people overlook. Take some AA batteries for the transmitter. More than once I've been out there and had my actual radio go dead and had to pirate the batteries out of a different transmitter just to keep running when all I had to do was bring these. And the last item that you absolutely have to take with you are the wheel wrenches. This will get the wheels off. These help, the smaller one helps work on the shock absorbers. So these two items here are real handy. If you need to torque down a wheel nut real quick, this is the easiest way to do it. It's nimble and you can stick it in your pocket and just keep it with you. That being said, guys, let's talk about some of the options for what you should have with you out in the field. And it depends on how long you're gonna be out there. If you're going out for a full day event, you might wanna take a couple of these items with you. And first off, what we have here is just a small cordless screwdriver. And this one will take the different bits and you can get these into them pretty simply. Now these are your regular hex drivers that go in them and many companies make these, doesn't matter which ones you get. They'll plug right into this and this only turns at 700 RPM. So when you're in a hurry, this will keep the RPM down enough to where it won't burn out the threads. It'll still over torque it. You still wanna do that by hand. But unlike one of the ones we normally use here, this won't spin fast enough to just burn the plastic up and cause problems. So that's a really nice bonus. Also, here's an attachment that goes with it as well. And this is a, this will get your sockets right on that so you can use it for nuts too. So that socket set I showed you earlier, these will allow that screwdriver to run them. And finally, the last item that we think you need to take with you, there's a couple others that you can throw in there if you think you need them, but the last one, take a charger. There's nothing more frustrating than using up your last battery and you still have time to play. This could get you up and running for that last battery with the guys when you get that final race in to see who's king of the day. Take one of these with you if you have a place to plug it in. If not, these, some of these do come with adapters that'll hook to your truck battery and allow you to charge on site. So one of the final options here 
is this one because, and it's not to just take a charger so that you can refresh your batteries when you need to, and it'll keep you out there longer. So let's take a moment before we're done here and let's talk about the bag itself. Now, there's many different sizes of these. This is a small bag, it's uh, fold out and it is big enough to carry all of the stuff that we showed you on the bench here. But when you throw a charger and the drill in there, this thing right here gets a little bit tightly packed. But the neat thing is, all the tools that you should have in here fit nicely. You can huck it right in the car and you'll always have it with you. So when you have an issue, you've got this there so you can get back up and running quickly. But there are many different options. You know, many different companies make bags that work for this and size depends on what you want to put in it. Whatever you choose, that's nice. I, I favor small and compact so you can just huck them in the back seat and you're golden. As long as you have those with them, you're good to go. So hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do. And don't forget that notification bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. You know, these short little videos like this, we really enjoy these because this is the kind of subject that the mo most of the people out there that are new to the hobby overlook. You know, you go out, you think you can just take your car and have a good time. But when you need to wrench on something, you don't take the tools, that can be a real killer. Hopefully this video helped. If you guys have anything that you like to carry in your toolkit that isn't in this list, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying keep bashing guys.